and horsemanship, it's the little things that make the big difference. And I don't think there's any area that brings that out more clearly than in the saddling process. Paying attention to detail, the procedures, and taking care of these little things can make for a successful ride. Let's go through a few of these little things that make the big difference. How about the way we set that saddle up on our horse? Years ago, somebody showed me this, and over the years, people have asked me, hey, how did you do that? Setting a saddle up so smooth, rather than like throwing rocks in the back of a wagon. I'm gonna try to end up with my left hand right up here on the top of this pad. My left hand on the cantle, my right hand right up here on the skirt, big swing, and set that saddle up. How smooth can we be? And ladies, don't be discouraged. It's more of a technique than it is a strength. The neat thing about setting these saddles up on the right hand side, have you ever set your saddle up and all those cinches are wadded up underneath your saddle? By setting it up on the right hand side, my cinches are here. They're not up underneath my saddle. I didn't have to clear those cinches over the top of my horse's back. Also, I've saddled up a lot of colts in my lifetime and the idea of not having to walk back around that very touchy colt the first time to let these cinches down is pretty slick. But you can set that saddle up from either side. And now I'm here to adjust my cinch and do whatever I need to do there to get it just right. I have a latigo that is holding my cinch up on this right hand side, but many of you have offside billets, which is just fine as well. But here's something you need to keep in mind. In an offside billet, no matter where the cinch is attached, there is a wear point right here on the ring of this rigging that it will never change. And that could be your weakest link. You've got to check that, you've got to watch because that will at some point break if you don't replace it at some point. So keep that in mind for those of you that have offside billets. When I think things are adjusted pretty good, I'll swing back around to this side. Another big thing that you need to consider is the symmetry of your pads underneath this saddle, making sure things are balanced front to back and left to right. If you're starting off with crooked pads, they're just gonna get worse and worse as the ride goes on. Now, I tell my students, if you have to cheat your pad somewhere, cheat them in the back. Make sure you have plenty of pad right up here in front because those pads have a tendency to wanna to scooch back over time. And so if your pad is already cheated up here, that pad just might go right out the back. Get plenty of pad right up front here. When I was about 12 years old, I helped the old man saddle up the dude horses in Fresno, California, and he was adamant that at the end of the day, my latigos were done just like this. So that when we came in the next morning and grabbed that cinch, we could stick that in through there and boom, we were ready to go. Have you ever fought your latigos and they're twisted and you're trying to get them all straightened out? So at the end of the day, when we were uncinching those horses, we would reach halfway down that latigo, run it up from behind and put it just like this. There, boom, it is ready to go for tomorrow. I always encourage my riders, make your cinching up process a two or three step process. Don't just cut your horse in two right there at the hitching rail. Get it up there just snug enough to where it'll stay in the middle of his back, lead him off a few steps, lunge him around, draw it up two or three times before you get on him. This ladder goes ready to go. So we begin to feed it through. On most configurations of saddles, there's a lot to go and a cinch, and this cinch has a tongue right here. And I see people doing a lot of different things other than how the saddle maker designed for it to work. The way that we want to make this happen is we want to stick this tongue in a hole, and I think people get nervous. They think, I don't think that's going to stay. Well, it might not stay unless we do this. We take this first wrap and give it a pull. That locks it down. Now we don't have to make a big knot right here. You say, well, I'm out of holes. Well, perhaps we need to punch some more holes, or maybe our cinch is a little bit too long. So you get things adjusted properly, things work a lot better. It's the little things that make the big difference. I'm Richard Winters, thanks for watching.